Howdy everyone, Michelle here and happy looming. So today we are going to work on the new Rainier cowl. Now I do have a written pattern, obviously you can see it here, that is available and I do highly suggest that you print out this written pattern. You'll be able to find the link below. Um, to work along with this video, especially because I've heard a lot of feedback from people. They say they're not sure how to read patterns. They don't understand it. It's overwhelming. I am going to break this down and make this super easy for you. So if you haven't already, grab and print out a copy of the pattern and you'll see everything on here that you need as well as your instructions. But... I also have a handy dandy chart here on the back that you guys can follow along with because I know some people are visual and they like to see a chart instead of reading it. Makes it easier. And I suggest um, a little tip from Good Knit Kisses that I got before when I worked on her quick lace scarf. Um, grab a post-it note and then that way you can just put it right here so you know which one you're focusing on as far as which line you're on. So that's another handy tip. So um, if you haven't done so, please print out your copy. If you have a post-it note or something that you could put there to keep track, it'll also make it easier for you. So we're going to jump right in. So as you can see here, this one that I did, um, I used a Cinderwood loom. It's a 90 peg half inch loom. I completely understand that not everybody has that loom. That's okay. If you have an all-in-one loom, if you have a large um, leisure arts oval loom that's 70 pegs so there's lots of options out there for this tutorial just to show you guys how to do this i'm just using this um regular it's it's an 11 16 um and it's 30 peg i'm just going to show you on this but you obviously want to use a loom that's going to be big enough for a cowl um and it doesn't have to be super tight this is a nice light lacy cowl as you can see and um, it's really not meant to be like a super snug across the neck. Um, and as you can see, so my inspiration for this, as you can see here, they kind of look like mountaintops a little bit. But my husband, the diver that he is, um, would probably see like a whale tail. I hate that phrase. Um, or even like a mermaid tail in that. But um, we like to go to the mountains to hike the river, and that's what's inspired me to do this. Um, a couple of weeks ago we went, so that's why I'm calling it the Rainier Cow, because Rainier Mountain, Mount Rainier, um, I see pretty much every day outside of my window. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to tuck this one over here. And like I said, grab your loom. Now for this one, just for purposes to show you, how to do everything um, that's on this chart. Uh, I'm going to actually teach you guys a little hack because a lot of times with these charts, like you have to go in, you have to do these yarn overs, and then you have to pull from here, especially if you're working um, from right to left like I do. It's difficult when you get to these because your tension is so tight to pull that back over or even this one. I'm going to show you guys a little hack on how to do that because most of the time people always just set this up um you know they'll they'll do this row and then they'll knit and everything so i'm going to show you a real easy way to do that so the very first thing i would like for everybody to do if you haven't already um you're going to want to mark your loom every 10 stitches now this particular loom that i'm using just for showing purposes right now is only 30 pegs so that's why I have one here, one here. So here is one through 10, and then one through 10 here, and then one through 10 here. That will make it a lot easier, especially when you're following your chart because it is um, in 10. It's eight and 10, okay. So 10 section or, or 10, 10 peg sections and then eight rows total. And for this, I'm using some leftover yarn that I got from my landlady's knit shop. I don't remember the name of it or anything like that, but I will try and find out and let you guys know because I'm sure somebody's going to say, oh, I love that yarn. What is it? I have no idea. Um, and obviously, we're going to use our handy dandy hook and let's get started. So the very first thing that we're going to do is you're going to cast on. Now, 
You can use any cast on you want. I like to recommend the no hook crochet cast on, which you'll find the, um, the link for here. The easiest one that I found for everybody to learn how to do is from Toodalip, which is, this is her link here. And it is super easy to do. So I'm gonna pause the video, go ahead and cast on all that you need to cast on, and then meet me back here. All right, so I am completely cast on. And again, remember, I am using a much smaller loom. This obviously would not even fit on me as a cow. I'm just doing this to show you um, the quickest way to do this. So once you're completely casted on, now what you're gonna do is just simply purl all the way around. You're only gonna purl the um, very first and the very last before you bind out. So after you cast on, you're gonna purl all the way around, coming back to your starting peg. And then once it's completely done, you have the thickness that you want, then you're gonna purl one more time before you cast off. So go ahead and purl all the way around and meet me back here at your starting peg. All right, so I am purling my last one and I'm back to my starting peg here. So we're gonna jump right into this and I'm gonna show you the chart first and then um, you'll understand what I'm about to talk about. So you wanna put your sticky right there so we know we're gonna, what I like to call is do our first setup bro. So we're gonna set this up and this is where this little hack that I'm talking about, when you see charts like this and it's kind of difficult because um, you know, sometimes people have tension that is so tight that if they've already got everything across here, knitted across and then they have to go back and do this, it makes it really difficult. So um, what I found is, now on this first one, if you're following along, the written, um, and this is between the brackets, obviously, as you guys know, on this particular one, obviously, I'm only going to do three sets because it's only 30 on yours. Also, if you have the, um, the X loom, you'll be able to use that one for this as well. I forgot all about mine. It's sitting right there behind me. Um, so on this first round, we're going to knit one yarn over. Um, this symbol here is actually for, um, SSK, which is slip, slip, knit. Okay. But people have a hard time and they get really overwhelmed when they see stuff like that. So that's why I try to break this down as easy for everybody to understand. So again, knit, yarn over, knit two together, knit five, knit two together and yarn over. So this is where people are like, well, I can't knit two together yet because I didn't yarn over. That's where I'm going to show you this little trick. So Again, we're here on row one. So row one tells me that I'm going to, these empty blocks are knit. So I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna knit these two together, I'm gonna to true knit or you knit these five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then I'm going to um, knit these two together, but how am I gonna knit these two together if I have this yarn over? So that's where I'm gonna show you. Okay, so the very first one, if you're following along with the um, pattern, again, it'll make it a lot easier for you to understand. You're just going to unit, then I'm going to yarn over. So what I'm gonna do is do this, and then I'm gonna go to the next one, which would actually show on my chart as knit two together. But what I'm doing is I'm coming back to this second one, which I have to yarn over. Slightly tug, you don't have to pull it really hard. Okay, slightly tug, get enough out, then bring that over. Because what happens if you go all the way across and then you come back and try and get that, it's just such a bugger. So now I have this one knitted, this one's empty, and I have two on this one, but we're not gonna knit those two together yet. Okay, so you have two on here. Follow along with me. <laughs> and then we're gonna knit five, two, three, four, five, and then it says to knit two together on this one and yarn over on this one. So what I do is I knit this one and I knit this one and then I carry this one that's my yarn over back one peg. So now in this first set of 10, I have knit this is empty because this is where my yarn over was. I have two strands on this one. Knit, 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 knit. 
two strands and empty. And that's exactly what it looks like on here. Now I know right now you're going, Michelle, we have to knit these two together. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that when we get to row two. Okay. So continue doing that through this whole round and then meet me back here at the starter peg. And then I'll show you how to knit these two together. Okay. Also real quick, um, in case anybody's wondering. So this last one is an empty one. Leave your empty pegs empty. So when you go to the next one, you're going to just come right behind it. This first one, you're just going to knit and repeat the steps that you did over here with your yarn overs. Meet me back here at the starting peg. All right, so I'm coming up again. Mine is much smaller. I'm at this last one and then carry that back one. Okay, so each section should again look like this where here's my first peg that should be knitted with a yarn on it. My second peg is going to be empty. My third peg is going to have two. Here's four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine should have two and 10 should be empty. That should be the same all the way around. Here's my next section. Here's my next section. Now, on row two on this chart, let's move our sticky. It shows that we should just knit. This is where, oops, get on there. There we go. So all of these are knit. This is where we're actually going to knit these two together. And that's why this makes it so much easier for people who have tension issues. And they get upset because they'll break their yarn, they'll break a peg, they'll break their hook, and they get frustrated and never wanna do things like this again. That's why I created this little trick to make it a lot easier for everybody. So the last peg, as you can see, that's an empty peg. I'm bringing my working yarn behind. Here's my starting peg, as you can see. Okay, bring my working yarn behind this empty one, and we're just going to knit. So there's no yarn on this one here. What we're gonna do now is bring the working yarn in front of all the empty ones as we go. And as we come to this third one, we have two strands. Now, if it's difficult for you to lift off both strands at once, sometimes it gets really tight. What you can do is one at a time. So put your working yarn in front, grab one piece, and then grab the other and just pop it down and then continue to knit all the way and you'll come up to the next one that's two strands and we're coming up on it now so this one here we have two strands all right so you're going to knit those two together and we have an empty one on this tenth one so we bring the working yarn in front and we go to this one and you're just going to repeat that process all the way around until you come back to your starting peg. So go ahead and meet me back here. All right. So here's my last peg and I'm just going to yarn in front and just knit off this first one. Okay. So you have already done round one and round two. And it's just that easy with that little trick that I just showed you on setting it up before you knit everything off. So as you can see, all of them have yarn on them now, okay? None of them should be empty at this point. Now we're going to go into round three. And as you can see, it starts to move in a little bit on both sides. So in round three, we're going to knit, knit, yarn over. You'll have two strands here, one, two, three knits in the middle two strands here, yarn over, and knit. Okay, so just like we did before, we're gonna set this row up. So this first one I've already knitted. My starting peg, I've already knitted that one. So I gotta knit one more. And then this would be my yarn over one, but what I'm gonna do is knit this one, knit the next one, go back, hug on it a little bit, and carry it over. So now, starting peg one, knit two knit three yarn over four i have two strands 
All right, and then we're gonna do three in the middle. One, two, three, and then we're going to have two strands here. So knit that one, knit this one, and this one, the one we just knitted, is the one we're gonna yarn over. So we're gonna carry that off, take it back to peg um, eight, nine will be empty, and then 10, we're just going to knit. So let me show you again. We're on round three. So knit, knit, yarn over. You should have two strands, knit, 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 two strands, yarn over so it's empty, and knit. So knit, knit. This is where I yarned over so it's empty. Two strands, knit, 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 two strands, yarn over and knit. Okay, so repeat that through your 10 sets until we're back at our starting peg and I'll meet you back here. All right, I am coming up on the end of my row. Carry that one over and knit. All right, so again, we're working on round three where we did a knit knit yarn over we should have two strands on peg four knit 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 on peg eight we should have two strands nine is empty with a yarn over and then knit so starting peg here knit knit empty because that's where i did my yarn over to here and i have two strands on peg four knit 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 i have two pegs on strand eight or <laughs> two pegs two strands on peg eight Nine is empty because that's where I did my yarn over back to eight and then 10. And it's the same all the way around. Okay. And then row four, just like row two, six and eight as well, is just going to be knits. And that's where we're going to knit off all of these. We're going to carry over empty ones in front and we're going to knit off two of those strands together on the ones that have it. So, knit, knit, working yarn in front. And again, if you struggle with getting two strands over at the same time, that's okay. Do one at a time. There is no looming place to tell you that you have to do it a certain way. Whatever works easiest for you. I know some people struggle with their tension and it gets a little difficult because they do it too tight. That's okay. Work whatever finds the easiest way for you, whatever you find the easiest way. Hi, Riley. He's right underneath my desk. <laughs> Silly boy. All right. Now, again, mine is a smaller loom, so I don't have as far to go. So just continue knitting off all of those, bringing the working yarn in front of the empty ones, knitting off those two strands on the pegs that you have them, four and eight. And I'm coming up at the end of my round. There we go. And you'll see they are all with yarn on them. All right, easy peasy. Let's move on to five. So let's move our sticky up a little bit. Now, as you can see, we're coming in and we're bringing it tighter on this next one. So here we're gonna have a knit, 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 yarn over, we'll have two strands, a single knit, two strands, yarn over, knit, knit, okay? So, do one, two, three, this is going to be my yarn over, so what I'm going to do is knit that one, knit the one next to it, go back one, tug it a little bit, you don't have to pull it out crazy long, slide it down, we're going to knit one in the middle, and then we're going to knit one, two, and this is the one we're going to yarn over. So now we have two strands, one knit, and then two strands, empty peg, empty peg. All right, and then knit, knit. Okay, so as you can see in our chart again, 
three knits, one yarn over, so that's going to be empty, two strands. There's going to be a knit there, two strands, empty from a yarn over, knit, knit. So, knit, 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 yarn over, so it's empty, two strands, one knit, two strands, empty from my yarn over, knit, knit. Okay, so repeat that all the way around. Meet me back here at the starting peg. All right, now I'm coming up on the end of my round. There we go. So just like the directions, knit, 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 empty from a yarn over, two strands, one, two strands, empty, knit, knit. Okay, so you should have that on yours, just like mine, all the way around. Okay, now row six, what do we do? We just knit, just like we did two and four. Okay. Whoa. Stay. There we go. So we're going to knit all those. So the ones that are empty, we're going to just bring the working yarn in front. The ones that have two strands, we're going to knit those two together. All right. So let's do this first section. We're going to knit, knit, knit. We're going to come up on our yarn over. So that's an empty peg. What do we do? We come in front. We knit those two strands next to that together. And we keep finishing that up. Two strands, empty peg, yarn in front, knit and knit. All right, so complete that all the way around. Meet me back here, we'll get on seven and then we're almost done. All right, last one, there we go. So. I've knitted off all of them. I brought my yarn in front, the ones that were empty. And as you can see, there's yarn on all of them. Okay, so now we're gonna get on to the last one here, which is row seven. And as you can see here on seven, we have four knits, yarn over. So that one's gonna be empty. Here, you're gonna have three strands because you brought this one from here, this one from here, and you're gonna knit off all three of those. And then this one's gonna be empty with the yarn over once we bring it over here, and then three, okay? So let's get into that. So we're gonna do four knits. One, two, three, four. Now this fifth one will be my yarn over. We're gonna go one past that. This one's gonna have three on it. We're gonna go back one, we're gonna tug and just bring that working yarn over. Now you can see this one's empty, this one has two, but we're gonna go over to the one to the left of that. We're gonna knit that one off, pick up that working yarn, bring it back. So now you can see there is one, two, three and the same thing for this when you go to knit this off don't feel you have to grab all three of them at once you can do them one at a time it makes it a whole lot easier trust me all right so now this is an empty one we're going to bring our working yarn behind this one because we're still setting up this row only in the knit rows do you come across in the front okay so we're going to knit these last three in that section all right so as you can see here here's our starting peg knit Knit, 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 empty because this is the yarn over. One, two, three strands on this one, empty because we yarned over one, two, and three. Just like our chart here, where we had one, two, three, four, yarn over, so that's the empty, three strands, yarn over because that um, we did that, so that one's empty, one, two, three. All right, so you're gonna repeat that all the way around and then meet me back here and then I'll show you how to do the last one and then you're just basically gonna repeat that process. All right, knitting off my last one. Perfect. So as you can see, I already should do this first set. Each one is like that. One, two, three, four. Five is empty because we yarned over. We have one, two, three strands on this one. This one's empty because we've moved that over and then one, two, and three. So it's the same all the way around. All right, now on row eight, what do we do? We just knit everything off. And again, when you come up to the ones that have um, three strands, 
don't feel like you have to push it and possibly risk breaking the yarn because you might have a little tight tension or something. When you come up to that, don't be afraid. Just do them one at a time. Okay, slow and steady wins the race. So I've come up to my first one, which was my yarn over. So that's an empty peg. Bring your working yarn in front. You're going to come over here to this one. And if it's easy to do one at a time, do one at a time. Two and three. That way you don't have to worry about breaking your yarn, breaking a peg, breaking your hook, because it happens. All right, so we have our other empty peg here, which was our yarn over. We're bringing the working yarn in front. Go to the next one and knit it off. Two, three. And you're going to repeat that until you get back to your starting peg. You're just going to knit all the way. When you get to that one with three, take your time with it. Don't rush. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't get all three of them over all at once. That is okay. Knit, knit, knit. And this actually works up pretty quick. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that last week was kind of crazy for me, I probably would have had that cowl done much quicker, but I was working on a couple of projects all at the same time. And I kept putting that one on the side to get other ones done that were ordered too. And now I'm coming up and that's it. So there you go. Now the inside of it doesn't look very pretty. Um, that's why somebody had asked me if they could use this to possibly do a shawl. You can, if you want to do this flat panel, but this is what it's going to look like on one side, which really isn't that attractive. Let me grab this one that's already done. So on the outside, you could see the nice neat knitted stitches, but on the inside, I mean, sure, it's still pretty, but it's really up to you. Okay. So you could see it's, it's a little different on the other side with the stitches. So yes, you can do this flat panel. You would just, um, apply the same techniques that I did. Um, uh, the one from good knit kisses, um, she, she does hers in flat panel as well. So you're welcome to do that. And again, like I said, I highly suggest that you use the written pattern along with this video to help you out. And then once you get the desired length, now I did a total of eight sets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this particular one. And it is, give me a second, 10 inches. Okay. So um, eight sets should give you plenty. Again, if you're using a thicker yarn, you're going to, you know, it's going to come up faster for this particular one. I used um, Karen Simply Soft in Heather Gray. It's really light and lacy, um, but you could do a thicker one if you want. Again, no looming, please. This is totally your project. It's up to you, but I can't wait to see what everybody does. Now to do the bind off on this, I do highly recommend, like I always have, to use the super stretchy bind off that you can find the link to Luma Hats uh, super uh, stretchy here in the um, info section below as well. And of course, if you ever have any questions, if you're not a member of my looming group, Love to Loom, you are more than welcome to join us. We'd love having new members and we're all about breaking out of that box of simple hats and and scarves and stuff like that. We like to do pretty things. I like to create things to um, allow others to see that they could do more than just a simple hat and scarf. They can make really beautiful things like this that knitters would look at, needle knitters would look at and go, there's no way you could have done that on a loom. Yes, we do. All right, guys, I love you bunches. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and I can't wait to see what everybody makes. Have a great one. Bye.